So the other day I got a message from one of my patrons who raised the issue of 432 hertz. Uh, if you play an A on a modern instrument it will vibrate at 440 hertz but apparently this has not always been the case. Uh, for instance in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt they used to tune their instruments lower uh, in which case this note A will vibrate at 432 hertz instead of 440. And some people claim that if you tune your instruments lower like this uh, the music will sound brighter, uh, more pleasant and simply better. So this frequency 432 is claimed to resonate better with certain frequencies uh, of our bodies and also the earth for instance the rotation speed of the earth and other uh, frequencies in nature and some people even claim that the 440 hertz tuning was introduced by the nazis in the second world war uh, to kind of agitate the common people to make them feel uneasy and aggressive and therefore make them easier to manipulate and to be honest I'm quite skeptical about the 432 hertz uh, thing because even if it were true that the uh, frequency of 432 itself uh, would be somehow special uh, related to nature and so on uh, that still would not count for all the other notes that you would play because in our modern equal temperament tuning um, all the relationships between the different notes are not mathematically perf perfect so even if 432 would be special all the other notes are not uh, mathematically related to this frequency in a perfect way so I'd say before you start worrying about the 432 hertz uh, thing you better start worrying first about our standard modern tuning because I think we are much more sensitive to the relationship between uh, the notes themselves than we are uh, to some multiplication of the earth's rotating frequency. So let's say you want to divide the octave in a mathematically perfect way, uh, you could, but long story short, uh, in the end all the black keys would sound a bit out of key and you would only be able to use, let's say, the white keys of a piano. And to have only the white keys at your disposal is a bit limiting and therefore at some point in history uh, we said, well, let's just alter all the frequencies of these individual notes so we can at least combine all the different keys. And it's kind of a long story but it boils down to the fact that in our modern day tuning all the notes are slightly off and they don't sound really bad to us but that's just because we're used to the way things are. So here's an example. I have a synthesizer which goes through an oscilloscope which basically visualizes uh, what you hear like this. And in perfect tuning when I play for instance a major third It looks and sounds uh, really kind of perfect, really peaceful, calm, in balance. And if I were to do the same thing in uh, standard tuning, like this. It sounds really restless, a bit chaotic, and you can really hear kind of the frequencies fighting each other. So once again, let's go back to perfect tuning. It's kind of calm and in balance. Back to standard modern tuning. And let's do some more comparisons. Um, let's play for instance a C major chord in perfect tuning. And do the same thing in standard tuning. And orchestras and choirs have the capacity to slightly alter their pitch so they can approach these perfect uh, tuning intervals. But keyboards and all fretted instruments uh, do not. So this is how all our instruments are tuned. So this is also why I would be worrying about this first rather than 432 hertz. Now moving forward I decided to make a piece uh, in perfect tuning so only using the white keys uh, of the piano and I also based the tempo of the song on the frequency of the root note of the key. So in this case I'm playing in the key of C, the root note is C, in this tuning it vibrates at 1. 
29.5 hertz uh, per second. If I multiply that by 60, I get amount of frequencies uh, per minute. So beats per minute, uh, which is actually the value which we use to determine the tempo of a song. Uh, in this case, the result is 7,770, which is way too fast, uh, way too high a number to ever be the tempo of a song. So I just divided that by 100. So now I get 77.7, .7, uh, which is the tempo of my song. Which means if I play uh, quarter notes, for instance, in this tempo, I'm actually playing a really low C note. And the same goes for multiplications of that. So if I play 8 notes or 60 note, I'm basically playing a very low C. And I find this a quite satisfying, elegant idea. I also use the mathematical relationships of the individual notes of the scale to structure uh, the piece by kind of converting frequencies into durations. And here you have to think in distances. Uh, take an octave between C and the next C and I take the first C as the beginning of my piece and the next C as the end. So in my project I put markers uh, between these two points. And then I put a marker at the point where the next frequency, so the next note in the scale is. So the space between the beginning and the end uh, of my piece is uh, divided in exactly the same way uh, as the octave in perfect tuning is divided. By the way, the length of the piece is 129.5 uh, seconds, which is exactly the same as the frequency of the root note of the scale, so C. Uh, lastly, the lyrics. This whole thing about resonating frequencies uh, got me thinking about a German mathematician and astronomer called Johannes Kepler, who discovered that in our solar system, uh, it turns out that uh, the ratios between the minimum and maximum angular speeds of our planets, as seen from the sun, are the same as the ratios of some of our musical intervals, which is quite fascinating and interesting and there's a lot more to say about this so-called uh, harmony of the spheres but for now I just settled on incorporating a poem called Dancing on the Music of the Spheres uh, which also became the title of the piece. So uh, have a listen to it, uh, better listen uh, on good speakers or headphones and uh, yeah I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Later!